Sometimes they come to me and tell me how lucky I am because I travel. Because I just quit my job and went to places they will probably never go. Training in the desert, abandoned islands or legendary gyms. Doing exotic things like surfing in the desert, sleeping on the mats around the world or searching for giant turtles in the Middle East in pitch black. But I don't think they got me right. My guide in this is always saying that traveling is a must do for everyone. But what I found out is that the most important journey for my personal development is the one out of my comfort zone, the same as in Jiu Jitsu. Nobody is selling tickets for that travel, no one is giving you a ride on this trip, you have to do it by yourself. If you don't try to go out of your comfort zone, it doesn't really matter if you take the plane to the other side of the globe, because you stay the same. Pictures from different places don't make you a better or more developed person, but talking to different people, even from your local community, might do. I don't respect very much the ones who never even try to get out of their comfort zone, but the only people that I dislike more are those who pretend to be some kind of a life coaches and tell you what you should or shouldn't do. So I better shut the fuck up. 5.45 the time and we have got a nice SMS saying greetings from the BJJ Nomad crew. We're in the middle of the desert filming a jiu-jitsu documentary and listening to you. Big high five to you guys. Hope you're having a good one. BJJ Nomad! Our journey as BJJ Nomads continues. This is our last day here on the Balkans and tomorrow we will fly to a place that many Archie Suave followers dream of visiting. United Arab Emirates. I will be honest. There I had huge eye-opening experiences, I exposed some stereotypes and gained unexpected new ones. As I said before, it doesn't matter where you will go, but who will you meet there and what will you learn? I had no clue what I wanted to do in my life. Like I didn't know like I want to be a police officer, I want to be a doctor, like I had no idea. And that created some frustrations, you know. But when I started to dedicate myself and in Jiu Jitsu and started doing well in competitions, then it, it just felt like uh, natural, you know. And now I'm 100% sure that I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. My biggest achievement is that I'm a good example to other people. Medals cannot make that, you know, even if you are a good good fighter or a good player, if you don't have a good attitude, if you don't have a good relationship with the people, medals will not make you a good, you know, a good example. Jiu Jitsu changed me and make me a good person and I'm lucky that I'm the way I am. Fighting I'm like a Spartan, I don't give up, I have broke my hand in a fight, I have broke my arm, I have been in many bad situations and I'm not very talented at all, I'm not very good, but one thing I have is heart, I never give up. I was a cop for nine years and uh, you know, it was good man, it was a good job, I got to help people and, and, and sometimes it was tough but for the most part it was a really good job. Um, Have you ever armbarred some criminal? Yeah, 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 actually yeah. When my job became promoting that sport, I can tell you that nobody knew what Jiu Jitsu is, they couldn't pronounce it. Now I'm surprised to enter a, a store and the sales people would recognize the broken ear and they know it's jiu-jitsu. It's very important in jiu-jitsu to drill a lot. Something I've been, I've been telling people all over my life, the more you repeat, the better you get. You know, don't get the bullshit from Kid Dale. He doesn't know what he's talking about, you know. He's stinky as well. I, I think quite to think of myself as a good Muslim. I pray five times a day. I do good. I follow the teachings of uh, Islam. I do good to people. I started doing jiu-jitsu four, uh, four years ago. I loved it. I fell in love with it. And what, accidentally, I came across uh, some, something in Islam about our prophet, which showed that he's a wrestler and a grappler. And you can, you can look that up, you'll find it. It's in the teaching uh, and the stories of the prophet. So that doesn't make uh, grappling and wrestling just uh, permissible. It makes it noble. You know, there's this saying that people like to say all the time and I hear it and, you know, jiu-jitsu saved my life. You know, in my case, opening a school of jiu-jitsu almost took my life, you know. And <laughs> when people say that, I kind of laugh, I'm like, hey, it saved your life, I almost died for this, you know. It's, I, I paid the ultimate price, you know, and good thing I'm still alive, so, I mean, I'm here to tell the story. DJJ Nomad, living by the key. Aloha.
This is our last episode in the Balkans, in Europe, and then we're going to Arabia, UAE and around. That's why I'm dressed like this. It's not that I'm going to show off or pick up chicks, but, you know, since we're going there, I think I should prepare myself to blend in with the locals. People think that the gi is the uniform for BJJ, but what I have to say is that the new uniform is what I'm wearing. Why? Because it combines the best of both worlds. I have gi chokes, like this if you pull, camera on, can you pull to choke me? Yeah, choke, okay, okay. You also have the sleeves for arm drags and all the techniques with the sleeves. Okay, and at the same time, no pants. So, half is no gi, half is gi. Gi no gi. The BJJ Nomad. <laughs> My name is Mikhail and for the past 12 years I've been telling other people's life stories in the biggest reality shows in my country, Bulgaria. I'm a father, singer, animal rights activist, martial artist and cinematographer in his journey to explore the spirit of everyday fighters around the world. My guide on this adventure is the original BJJ nomad himself, Dimitrios Tsitos, a lifeguard, ex-professional swimmer and BJJ black belt who spent last 10 years traveling around the world teaching, competing and enjoying the lifestyle of a BJJ nomad, visiting more than 60 countries and never staying more than 6 months at one place. In the next year, our home will be the dojos of our friends around the world and the ground under the stars. And don't believe them when they say nomad means you have no home. I say nomad means your home everywhere you meet new friends. This is the BJJ Nomad. Boss. Boss. Again. <laughs> you knew, you knew. Of course, man. The echo of the ancient battles never ends in this city. Crusaders, gladiators, freedom fighters. They say Spartacus, the mighty Thracian, was born in this region. And since then, it's a cradle for warriors. Here we are, Plovdiv, Bulgaria, my hometown and the sixth oldest city in the world. It's just one hour from the capital Sofia, but it's like you're entering a totally different world because it saved a lot of its history through the centuries, like the Coliseum and the whole untouched Renaissance neighborhood. Our plan is to visit and have a seminar in a local Kudo team here. Kudo or Daijuku is a very interesting full contact sport, also known as the Furious Karate. Then we'll head to Tvrdica, the place where every single Bulgarian back in the world comes from. And after that, we'll be on our way to a place I can't wait for, the Dracula Castle in the heart of Romania. But first thing first... Mm. We finally made it to Plovdiv. One of the most ancient cities in the world. Thanks, Constantin, for driving half of the way. It's funny that we're here and we're still safe because it's the birthplace of uh, Mikhail, the guy behind the camera, the sniper director. We got at least 10 people pointing gun at us. Hey, motherfucker, get away Why you came back. But we're like, yeah, I'm not back. I came for one hour, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. So we're gonna do this and fly out of here because it's not safe. True story, man. True story. Hello. Have you ever seen that? No, never. But you already called them and you said, hey, make this for the camera. Me? Never. never. Kudo Academy Plovdi. I'm here to demonstrate to these guys that some of them are going to compete in the World Championship soon. Just a few ground techniques because these guys are super tough according to what I learned. Full contact karate style with the throws and the ground fighting. And uh, I'm going to try to just give them a few tips about a couple of techniques that they can use effectively in the ground. Because their rules if not mistaken, it's 30 seconds fighting on the ground and then it's stop. So you have to do something in 30 seconds or it's over. So it's kind of modified, uh, modified um, techniques for making it fast and effective. 
That's it. I don't know nothing about this system. I'm pretty sure most of you have never ever heard of Kudu 2. I found this martial art by accident when my daughter was born and I had to take a little break from work and return to my hometown for her first few months. Us. I was very disappointed that there is no jujitsu in the city, so I had to search for something else. I have always loved that Hoyce Gracie competed in the first UFCs with a gi and have been dreaming of a full contact martial art with ground game and a kimono since then. That's how I found about Daido Juku. Няма врати, които да извеждат към Великия път. Всеки сам трябва да ги построи сърцата си. А върха един, пътищата и пътеките, колкото и да обикаляте да въртат, винаги всички стигаме до едно и също място. Аз за себе си мога да кажа, че се определям като кодок. Кодо е създадено 1984 година от Джукучо, Такаши Азума, 9-ти Дан Кудо, 7-ти Дан Кьокушин. Пети дан мисля джудо и така произлиза дай до джуко. В Япония дрено са му казвали яростното карате. Концепцията на кудо е за минимално кратко време, максимални резултати на опонента. Самата постановка на боя максимално е доближена до една реална ситуация. Максимално. Първо, че ние се бием на тъми, няма къде да се опрем. Захватите, които се налагат на кимното, допринасят както в реална ситуация, ако съм облякан с дрехи, ума. Ако ме хване някой агресор, нали, как да се защита, как аз да хвана, как да го удара. Отделно е липсата на ръкавици. Аз не мога да се защитавам лицето с тях. Правя движение с тялото, за да се защита. Постановката на атаките ми идва от движение на тялото. Вярно, на първо поглед, като погледнете, е сходно. Казват, а, ето, кикбокс, а, ето, бокс, а, ето, джуджицу, а, ето, джудо. Но реално погледнато в самия файт, в течение на боя, вие виждате, че разликата е огромна. Идвайки тук момчет да тренират, много често споменават, че тези каски, тези кимона ни пречат. А реално погледнато, ние при то твърд бой, който упражняваме по време на сватките, понеже при нас няма ограничения. Идеята е такава, че са на нас удари с глава от захват, удари с колена в главата, удари с лакти в главата, хвърляне, боя продължава на земята. И все пак при цялата, при цялата тази сила ние искаме да останем с красиви лица. Но ударите са абсолютно идентични с удар как сте без каса. С изключение на това, че не остават аркади по носовете, по веждите но за нокаутите си тежки. Абсолютно също са, както да ударят без каска. Колкото е агресивен спорт да е и твърди двубой да има, агресията остава само на тъмит. Един боец трябва да развие своите интелектуални възможности, понеже проявите му на тъмито, на работа, трябва да, да са осмислени. Хората, когато видят един спортист, независимо от какъв спорт, ММА, кудо, карате, бокс, джудо, нагласите им за това, че тези хора са побойници. Те не са побойници. Напротив, от те осъзнавайки каква трябва могат да, да нанесат, предпочитат рес, с респект да излезат от всяка екстремна ситуация, която попадат те в нея. Насилието за нас не е решение на проблемите, но когато се наложи е опция. Пътя, който съм избрал, дай Господи да не се отклона от него, е кудо. Той ми дава смирение, уважение. Естествено, както много други съм се интересувал от бокс, от жужицо, борба. Отивам, въпреки уменията си, влизам вътре, като начинаеш да видя дали то стил ще ме приеме, дали аз ще го приема. Тренирам известно време, от обща култура. И пак се връщам към моите си. Единствено, кога ми харесва, кога ми използва. Има етика, има традиция. Понякога хората не правят разлика между бойните спортове и бойните изкуства. Без етика, без философия, без традиции, а, ние реално погледнато оставаме на някакво много ниско ниво. А не се развиваме като бойци, като тук всеки един поклон 
а, всеки един поклон, всяко едно уважение към другия. Това е дисциплина, това те кара да го правиш. Ти когато се подминяваш, когато казваш ус на треньора ти, на партньора ти, първото нещо, което ти уважаваш себе си, правиш го уважение към себе си, уважаваш труда, който си положил и на първ поглед, и какво си казвам, а, сега ще му се покуна, а, ще му се извина, защо? Превъзмогнеш легото, всичко се получава. Ероглиф акул означава чист, свободен, а, свободно съзнание, отворени врати. До е път. Техниките, които се използват, има една база, която трябва да освоите и в последствие с времето вие можете да практикувате абсолютно всичко, да приложите абсолютно всичко, което смятате, че, че е ефективно и ефикасно, което ще доведе до този резултат, да спазите концепцията на кудо. Минимално кратко време, максимални резултати. Няма рамки, няма ограничения. Няма кати. Кудо. Some of these friends of mine will soon compete in the World Kudo Championship in Tokyo, Japan. So Dimitrios decides to teach them very fast and effective choke that may be used great in the 30 second limited ground game that Kudo fights have. I'm there. You can be there when you break his posture, when you break his posture. You can adjust your hand in. You hold him. Okay, then find your way, bring the other hand in, elbow tight. Five seconds. I open, I walk, push him away. Doesn't matter. He try, if he tries to punch me, it's perfect. It's even better for me. One time, two times, maybe I push him away. Maybe he goes through my head. Almost everywhere we go. Dimitrius teaches a seminar or two, but in my book, BJJ Nomad is more about learning from everyone we visit. That's why we choose one victim from our crew, who will try the hard punches of Kudo. And, not surprisingly, it's not the director. It's maybe not a good idea. They have full faith mask. They just said that they, um, it looks more safe and it is for the head, but uh, when it's a hard knockout, it's even more rough. Because the, the mask doesn't give you a lot of oxygen to recover. Okay, so if you get knocked out, there is not more oxygen, so it's really brutal. Hopefully this is not, not the case today. You're from Chile now? I'm Chilean. <laughs> nice one. Chile. This was one of the guys was from Chile, but they killed him. My ears don't fit me here. They left That should be on I have to admit it's claustrophobic in here. I can hear my echo. It's like wearing a scuba diving equipment and at the same time trying to fight. Uh, that is our original ghost that we fight on tournaments and oh, nice. championships. This is a, it's like an underwear more or less thick. So imagine someone kicking you in the balls and you wear just this. I will explain you the ritual on the main fight. First greeting is a show manere, that's a main greeting to all the people in the room. Next one is to me. Shishinere, Gus. Otuganere. Gus. Okay. Come on. Ajime. Ajime. Baby. Oxygen. That's why I that's why I used resurrect. Okay guys. It's like using an elevation mask and someone punching in the face. The good thing is that doesn't hurt. 
The guy hit me a few times in the face. The plastic protects, but I think I prefer getting punched in the face rather than being able not to breathe. We have to thank you, the coach. Thank you. Thank you, coach. Thank you guys. Coach. Coach. I'm glad Dimitrios gets out of this alive, because we have a work to do. We're heading to the old mountain that splits Bulgaria into almost equal sized parts. Our goal is Tvrdica, very small but super important for the world of martial arts village. This is the place where every single Bulgarian back in the universe comes from. And it's in Bulgaria, not in Pakistan or China. Surprise, huh? Okay, so I'm about to meet Nick, it's the main trainer for Bulgarian bag here. Outside Stara Zagora, Bulgaria, Sofia. He's gonna show us some tricks, some exercises, and probably we're gonna get a good workout. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hey man, how are you? Hey. Good? Alright, good. Yeah. My name is Nick Stanchev, I'm Suplex Master. Welcome yes. to the heart of Suplex. Yeah, a song been a hot dog. Catch me on a bit, make it hot dog. I'm going in. You should know that the Balkans have crazy traditions in wrestling. After all, this combat sport was invented in the region by the old Greeks, so the so-called nation wrestles are pretty popular around here. In Turkey they do it with oil. It's pretty interesting that there was a huge scandal two years ago, when the organizers found out that big gay groups from Scandinavia are making special trips to watch the fights. Now they forbid the homosexuals to attend the events, but really, how can you recognize the guys? Look at Dimitrius, he even managed to get married. In Bulgaria, Romania and Serbia, the nation wrestles are down on grass fields outside of the village or on the village's square, and sometimes they are more dramatic than WWE. The gypsy man you are looking at now is the true prototype of the Undertaker, he even calls himself that way. His name is Itsu the Death, and of course it's written on his tank top with two grammatical errors in only one word. Can the Undertaker do that? I don't think so. In my opinion, this guy is the bright future of the ADCC. In the next episode, we are going to the heart of Abu Dhabi and I am definitely showing this footage to the Sheikh. Of course, most of the fights are not like that and include experienced wrestlers who put really good show for the viewers. But why are we showing that to you? The winner of the tournament takes some money and a lamp which he has to take on his shoulders and walk like that for a while. This position is pretty well known in every land which has shepherds. I've seen even painting of Jesus having a lamp on his shoulders. I've heard myths that this was what inspired Ivan Ivanov, the creator of the Bulgarian back, to invent it. But we'll let him tell us by himself more about that through the Skype connection between Tvrdica and United States of America, where he lives now. Uh, no, uh, of course the position holding the lamb, uh, this comes from the, the traditional folk style racing where we pick up the lamb, we swing it and place it on our shoulders, but uh, different, this, this cannot inspire me to create the Bulgarian back, you know, I, I don't want people to think in Bulgaria we're doing fitness with animals. That's, that's good to hear because uh, this show is very animal friendly. No animals will be harmed during the shooting of this episode. Now ask him. Uh, now. So, uh, as you understand, I'm a rookie in this, so he has to guide me through. No problem. This is very professional. You're looking great. Uh, I see you have a <laughs> yeah, flowers. flowers. Yeah. That's your passport. You wrestled before. I'm a I'm a black belt first degree Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Oh, wonderful. I'm a Jiu Jitsu guy. Yeah, no wrestling is you know like similar. 
Ivan left the country with only his Bulgarian bag prototype and couple of clothes on his back. And now his invention is a favorite tool for a lot of MMA and Jiu Jitsu stars. But he didn't forget where he came from and decided to give credit to his country and fellow Bulgarians. This is the Bulgarian bag. This is the original model of the Bulgarian bag, the genuine leather one. And the most important thing to know about this is that it's, made, it's proudly made in Bulgaria. Proudly made. Here's our logo with the Bulgarian flag, it says the Bulgarian bag. The production facility is, in, uh, is located in Tvarkitsa. That's where the production is. We manufacture, uh, we manufacture all the surplus product, not only the Bulgarian bag. I'm very proud uh, that we were able to give this project not to China, but to Bulgaria, where the originality is, and uh, where actually uh, uh, me and my brother grew up. And uh, we have been very happy to be able to help local uh, citizens there, Bulgaria and our towns, and in the in near area to give them jobs for them and uh, to help them, to help them also with, uh, with their lives. Well, this is what I call good budo, and what I call bad budo is me telling secretly to the surplus instructor to make it really difficult to Dimitrius. For the fun. Have you warmed up a little bit? You don't need to warm up for the 12 kilo no. bag, you already have the experience though. Yeah. You've been warming up the whole day, huh? Warming up, sleeping in the car. Alright then. Jiu Jitsu is all about grip, strong grip, and balance. And balance. So, what I need you to do. I need you to throw the bag and grab the same handle when it turns, like this. Balance and grip. Here we don't use much grip though, because this is only 8 kilos. One, two... <laughs> oh my god, when you go one, two and I'm about to go out of the room, man. You, you work too very difficult. Can I use my index like this? No, nope, you don't use your index. Open the one, open the chest. I think it's funny, this guy is gonna get his ass kicked later. Oh yeah, he definitely will, but I'll make him try as well. Who can I use my dummy? Dressing dummy. Okay, first try. Almost, almost got it. Nice. Samba. Few months after our visit in the factory, Ivan introduced their new Bulgarian bag Givest, specially designed for people training Jiu Jitsu and Judo. Bulgarian bag is something I really like to work with a lot anyways, but this has been a, a really cool invention that they're adding to the Bulgarian bag. You see here you can like get a good grip and roll your grips in to make a, a grip that's very similar to the, the sleeve grip, or you can hold it more like this and make it more like a collar grip. I would like to think that we have influenced him somehow, maybe or maybe not. Now my full attention is concentrated on our next goal, Dracula Castle in Romania. I'm so hungry man. You gonna leave your kid like that? Look, this guy left it so we cannot close also. <laughs> Put it on the side so we close and lock. In front of us is a few hour drive to the border between Transylvania and Wallachia, where the famous Bran Castle is located. Actually there is no proof that this was the home for the famous vampire, but it became very popular after the book that came out in 1897 situated this guy in this exact place. I must admit, I have very big expectations for that trip after seeing this super authentic footage from the Middle Ages. A deal. I want for you to go out and get me every night a different girl. You like to do that for me? Hmm? Hmm? You would have fun. What's left over, I'll give you. I'm going to make you a checkel man. And this is the place you report in every night. <laughs> Vlad Cepes is a very controversial figure in the history. He was super, super cruel when it came to punishment and loved to impale his enemies. But 
He didn't kill innocent virgins or kids as you may think. He was a crusader against the Ottoman Empire's attack on Europe. His father was in a fellowship of knights sworn to defend the Christian countries against the Muslim invasion. It was called the Order of the Dragon. So that's where the name Draco came from. Dragon. So actually the man was impiling forces who came to conquer his lands. That's what I've read. But because he doesn't really like to read, Demetrius is still thinking that Dracula is kind of affiliated team of his master Draculino. That's why my partner is walking around in deep pants and expects to go in for free. Dracula Castle, Pennsylvania. Not Pennsylvania, again, Transylvania. That was too fast now. <laughs> Always a little stress is good for your health. No matter where you are, you must take care of your body. Don't believe what they say. There is only one Dracula. Draculino student. I'm gonna demonstrate new techniques that uh, I just created. The famous. You just created, but it's tooth already famous. Bar. <laughs> According to some old books I found, Dracula and Romanians at all were super skilled and successful warriors and defeated everyone who they faced. But that may not be the undisputed truth, according to the most respected Jiu Jitsu instructor in the country, Tudor, whose gym will be our main training camp and hotel just in a few hours. It's very funny because uh, before in the communist era, the communists uh, modified the whole history. So we were like almost the best in the world. So every battle that we had, somehow we won. But after the uh, after 1989, we found the real history, which actually wasn't that good for us. Okay. Unfortunately, our background, our history tells us that we were more like uh, evading the fights and uh, not fighting uh, uh, all the way. So. Uh, of course, we had some moments that we are we were strong and we fought, but uh, I don't think, to be honest, that we are a, a, a fighter country, like a fighter mentality, okay? Which I think, in a way, is, uh, is good. And uh, the fighting spirit uh, comes a lot from the modern era, because we had very good uh, judo, wrestling, uh, boxing uh, results and especially in the communist era we were a very powerful uh, country in the world, Olympics and uh, everything. So I think that's the, the, the spirit that comes uh, actually in, into the modern martial arts rather than the history coming from our uh, uh, ancestors. Tudor and his team Absoluto are well known worldwide because of their Jiu Jitsu and MMA champions and we will meet them soon. But first, vampire stuff is waiting for us. <laughs> Man, if you see some vampires, please, can you almost lock them for me? I'm gonna tooth lock them. Nice. <laughs> uh, no defense, nothing. No back, uh, man, back mount, uh, bite, choke. Man, I, I, I did the perfect defense. But I bite you already. Really. You lost a lot of blood. You died. We lost three points again. And three points, man. You couldn't bury ball on me from this position. <laughs> so this place was built by. Long story short, you don't need to come here. I'm gonna tell you a story now. <laughs> He's gonna help me. Save your money, go to other place. This place was built by the Estonian. That's a good idea. It's Atos team. And also have this new device for defending the chokes. And any gi choke and the regulation. We just demonstrated that. If you wear that, you wouldn't be choked. If I have to be honest, I think the castle is kind of a tourist trap, super expensive and almost no relation to Dracula. You failed to meet my expectations, Dracula. Don't come here. It's my second time here. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, really knows, this guy really knows how to write English. I felt how, I felt like my life, man I cannot even read it. I feel like my how life is a big life coming here. No, just mix to home man. Home. 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 My whole life. 
Okay, so I feel like my whole life it's a lie coming here. Sex beer. Sex spear. I just wanted to bury him both. I will do it, bury him. Fucker. If I have learned something on this journey, it should be that there are hundreds of tourist traps on every single step, but nature just cannot be one of them. We are driving on the Trans Ferguson Alpine Pass Road, who was voted one of the most beautiful ones in the world a few years ago. Sorry, can you tell me the way to the... Motherfucker, don't even look at me. Nice boobs. <laughs> it was built in the 70s by the communist leader Nikolai Ceausescu who was scared of a military invasion in the region. They say hundreds of low rank soldiers died while working here because of the very bad conditions. Our goal is exactly 2034 meters high, the mystical Blair Lake, where Dimitrius will demonstrate his just invented but already worldwide famous anti-vampire jiu-jitsu technique called the Furious Tooth Crusher. <laughs> <laughs> Opa! <laughs> Let's try to find a lake now. It's nothing there. there what do you mean lake? lake? Lake, where are you? We are at the top of a um, Trans Faragasan Alpine Pass. Sha. The director told me to shut up, but for the first time, I'm not going to listen to him. He's asking us all the crazy shit, and we do it. That's how professional these guys are, me and him. That's also how idiots we are. <laughs> so the reason why we brought uh, Tostani with us, the young apprentice, is because we're gonna push him in. <laughs> like this, this is Sparta, push kick. The place is amazing and really goes hand in hand with the vampire idea of our trip. The only thing that bothers me a little bit is that the locals may think we are mocking their tourist places. That can be a little dangerous as you will see in our Middle East episodes. But for now, everything is just good, clean fun. Oh. Black belt. Black belts. Who told you black belts don't get cold? Will you take me to the hospital after? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's not a good answer. My, my phone is in my... My pants, the keys of the car are on me, so be careful, motherfuckers. Okay. Tell us, uh, director. If you look at us and laugh now. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are from the church or something? <laughs> Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> but it's the, new, the new, it's the new division of Ku Klux Klan, new chapter. They have black hoodies, not white. <laughs> and oh, they have belts also. This guy's a master, KKK. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Ready? Go. As you already know, if you don't know, now you know. I'm a big fan of Twilight movies. Twilight the series movie. Very romantic movie. And uh, there are vampires there. In this place, in this land, this is the land of the vampires. And um, there are many ways to kill a vampire. You take a stick and a hammer and you put it in his heart or a cross. Uh, sunlight. Under the sunlight, there is no sunlight. We cannot kill the vampire. Throw garlic or eat garlic and try to kiss the vampire. <laughs> I see it here when I see his <laughs> I see his reflex again. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Another way to kill the vampire is to... <laughs> is there any way I don't, I don't see the, uh, the lens? You just don't watch Fuck. it. <laughs> yeah, really, when they shoot movies, how many times they do the funny things? So in 2014, there are still vampires, but there are no ways to kill them the traditional way. But uh, Jiu Jitsu taught us a very nice way. It's called a cross choke tooth crusher. That's the vampire. If he tries to bite you, protect your hands, okay? And even you can slap it. Okay, if you slap it, it gets panic. So then you attack fast, you put one hand cross choke, he tries to bite you, you push the head away. He tries to bite you the other side, you push the head the other way. And now you're ready to put the second grip. You grab tight, come on this side, okay? Now if he tries to bite you, I can always defend with my forearms. Instead of doing the normal choke, which will not work because vampires have very strong necks, I'm gonna bring my left forearm high, my right forearm high, 
and I'm gonna do the bone crusher. No, the tooth crusher. And maybe bone crusher. <laughs> Why you laugh, Bambai, motherfucker? <laughs> break, I break your teeth now. <laughs> You know what? I'm getting a Draculino call. You demoted back to <laughs> white belt, man, with the, the things you do. Okay, let's finish the, the choke. All right. Now I'm gonna put pressure and. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. He's already human, man. Look. Yes, he became back to normal. The technique is so strong, man. So strong. It's unstoppable. The technique, you can see his gum there, his teeth. We have to go down now. Let's go, man. Let's leave. Like, come on. No horn. Say my no name. Say my name. Okay, now we're gonna go on the other side of the mountain. For those that ever wanna visit this place, this fantastic place, it's not really Fuck safe. Man. Doesn't look really safe here. My claustrophobic self is gonna start screaming again. Mine is. Anyway, we took the route from north to south because that's the most beautiful. Okay, so we're on top, we're taking this tunnel, it's pretty long, crazy, no lights, nothing. If I close my lights here, maybe a vampire is gonna jump, so I have to do the choke again. And we're gonna drop to the south part of the mountain, towards Bucharest, the capital. We're going there because we're meeting Tudor Mihaita, BJJ Black Belt, we're meeting him at his academy. So. Let's just try to make it safe there. Good chance. On this side, we're exiting. There is no mist. Good chance, but not very good. Let's see. Yep, look sunny. How about that, guys? Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding anyone, guys. Super weird. How is that possible, man? It's possible because the BJJ Nomad is here and the sniper director is using special effects. Don't buy this. I have never ever imagined that Romania can be so beautiful. These are the moments that you really regret you have to pass as fast as possible because everything in this documentary is done by the flow. Walk fast, sleep fast, eat fast, film fast because you have no time, no money and not enough content for the episode. But things somehow always end up good. Like, you drive down the mountain and for the first time in your life, you meet wild horses. Look, 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 look. Not a good idea, lady. Give the hands of the, the key to the horse. Look, this horse is like... Man, amazing. I just gave him bread, man. We step on the gas heavy because have only a few hours to reach the capital. In Bucharest, the absolute BJJ guys are waiting for us to be a part of their evening training session and I can't wait to meet my old friends there and finally have some food different than bread. them about the seminar so they don't forget. Yes. I am again. Uh, man. What about uh, <laughs> <laughs> the entrance is the other way. Okay. okay we go the other way. Yes, yes. We, so we make we make it three. official. Yes. Yeah. Don't know. He's oh. the he's the director, so you oh. have to speak with him and the manager. Just crazy, the crazy in Romania or uh, crazy the Romania because trip. we did a um, crazy trip also. Okay. But we found it, so you know, we so didn't get perfect, kidnapped yes. or bad. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna grab our stuff and go yeah, around. Come, come, come that way. I'll, I'll wait you over there. Okay, so good. The next one. Let's go. Grab our stuff. way of the warrior is like believe in, uh, in yourself, in uh, what you think uh, you can achieve and especially believe in something that you think you cannot achieve. I think this is the most important thing because I started Jiu Jitsu in Romania when there was no uh, Jiu Jitsu practitioner here in Romania. There was uh, almost no technique on the internet, the, the techniques that were on the internet were pictures 
and uh, it was a very hard beginning. Everybody in Romania was saying, oh, on the ground only the, the children fight. It was really hard because I was learning a lot of things by staying on forums. It's, it sounds really crazy now because I was going on a forum like Sherlock and MMA.tv and I was asking guys, what if a guy does this and this and this, what should I do? And then wait one day because it's uh, on another time zone and they would answer and it was a very hard process, you know. I had the problem with getting my guard, my open guard passed. I went to the, again to Sherdog and I asked the guys over there, guys, I'm getting my open guard passed a lot. What should I do the moment he passes the guard? There was one guy that said something funny. He's like, he said, when the guy is passing the guard, push like a woman's giving birth. And it was like very uh, uh, plastic, but it was very true. And uh, the moment I understood that, that I have to push so hard, uh, I, uh, I started to regain the guard and, and so on. This is the funny part, but most of it was, uh, was hard. It was, uh, I, I, I went to, to a Mendes Brothers Academy last year and uh, I trained there and I, uh, I gave a speech in front of everybody. It was, a, it was a, like a very intense moment for me. And I told them that they have to be grateful there in, in the United States that they have everything. And I, I, made, a, uh, I made a comparison with the Romania before 89, where me as a, as a kid, I wanted to have bananas, but I didn't have bananas. And with the thing that they have such a good uh, uh, teacher, such good professors, the professor uh, uh, Rafa Mendes and Guy Mendes, and this thing, People some, sometimes they take it for granted. They, they have jujitsu, they have a gym, they have a nice gym, they have an instructor, they have geese, they have the time to do it. But sometimes we take it for granted because sometimes you, you can't have a gym, a place where to train, you don't have a, a teacher, you don't have a gi, as it happens uh, sometimes in Romania. And you have to be like very happy to have this uh, every day in your life and to appreciate it. Tudor have started traveling abroad and visiting gyms around Europe in a struggle to stay tuned to what's going on in the jiu-jitsu community. On one of these trips he met the man himself and he remembers it like it was an hour ago. The only time he came to Europe um, it was uh, when he was 94 or 95 years old, I don't remember exactly, but next year he died and uh, I went to Robin Gracie's uh, academy in Barcelona, in Spain. The thing that I liked the most about the, this uh, meeting was the fact that although his body was weak and uh, his, his body was not listening to him the way he wanted, his spirit was there and every time he was showing a technique, I remember he was showing his famous choke and when he was doing the choke, he was making a, a grimace and he was like Argh. and I, I really could tell in, in his face that he was still thinking that he was a fighter and that he could beat us all if he wanted. Tudor made his hard way to earn the black belt without a real jiu-jitsu professor on his side. But that doesn't mean he didn't have a mentor all this time. His greatest supporter was his father, who is one of the most famous and respected actors in the country from the communist era to present days. So this is my uh, father's theater, this is his academy, this is where he's the director, as I am the coach in uh, Absoluto. Let's go inside. I used to come a lot here when I was a, when I was a child. And uh, actually there was a, a play where a tent was going to the, into the stage, we were going to see the stage. And I was uh, going into the tent and I was staying all the, all the time there, all the play. And I actually learned all the lines that my father had, I was like five or six years old. And I was imagining that he's going to get ill and uh, somebody has to replace him and I would go to the stage and uh, do the whole thing. So come here. And then you became Jiu-Jitsu Tech. Yes, I became also an artist, but a martial artist. So here is the, the big stage. There's this uh, very interesting thing uh, with my father. 
in one of his first movies, it was a comedy that is very famous in Romania. He's this young kid coming to the city, he wants to become a cop. And uh, he's saying in one of the one of the shots, he's saying uh, to the guy that is asking him, oh, what what are the things that you know that can help you be a cop? And he knows, I even know jujitsu. Știu si jujitsu. It's very funny because you make uh, like an arch over time and after I don't know how much, maybe 30 years uh, I start doing uh, Jiu Jitsu and uh, even now people uh, when uh, they see me and they know that I do Jiu Jitsu remind me of the fact that my father in, the, in that movie uh, said uh, I know Jiu Jitsu. It was like some years before you were even born, right? Yeah, it was like maybe six or seven years before I was born. My father was uh, was uh, really, really young. If you can change him now into an actor, would you do that? No, I would to transform an actor because you are an actor in what you do. That's a really nice thing that he said that uh, I'm an actor in what I do. It's like I'm pretending to, <laughs> to be a black belt. <laughs> Păi aș vrea să iau și eu cu trupa pe care o am atâtea diplome cât ai luat tu, câte medalii ai luat tu cu elevii pe care îi ai. He said that he would love to have so many titles, like world titles and diplomas in with his theater company as much as we had with our team in Jiu-Jitsu. What is that thing that in your movie Tudor showed me you say I know Jiu-Jitsu? It's from from up above, from God. I have some goals. I had some goals, and some of them are starting to to happen. Like having my black, getting my black belt, having a world champion, and so on. But I think that the more I teach Jiu-Jitsu and the more I have people around me, the small things that people tell you, like they say that, man, since I started Jiu-Jitsu, my life changed so much in, in my job, with my, with my family and everything. It's like the, when you, when you get a medal, and, and it's a great feeling when you have a guy medaling, like I have Camille and, and he's medaling in all over the world and he's making famous Romania, first of all. And then Absoluto is like a great feeling, but somewhere in the future, the, that metal is going to be just just a piece of, of metal. But the, the, the experience that surrounds it, everything, the connection that I have with him and with everybody around in the gym uh, makes it even greater. So I have connections with guys and we share experience and, and they get something from Jiu Jitsu that it doesn't matter if it's connected with the competition, with the medal or if it's connected with uh, uh, having a, receiving a belt. And uh, I think this is the, the, the greatest thing. And I would love to, to still uh, be able to bring people here and uh, have this connection and have this experience, because I think Jiu-Jitsu is more of, a, of an experience, a life-changing experience, than uh, having like a goal. The, the saying is the journey that counts is not the, the, the destination, the medal or the, the UFC contract that is signed. It is hard to imagine that this little team from the Balkans, with an instructor who is almost self-taught, won so many titles for the past years. Tudor said that the medals are not as important as the good influence of Jiu-Jitsu in your life, but in Camille Moldoveanu's way, they go hand in hand, since from 160 kg fat boy, he became a multiple time world champion. The first time when I entered in a Jiu-Jitsu gym, it was really strange, because the guys were just choking each other, putting balls on the face, <laughs> and everybody was in pyjamas, and I thought that it was more uh, about fighting and punching and about uh, kicking somebody's ass, and less about uh, hugging. So, <laughs> it was really strange for me, but it consumed me a lot as in energy, and I really continued because I wanted to lose weight. It, in the first two weeks, until I started to understand that if you have one piece of a 
puzzle, you can combine it with an arbor and something else, it will start to, to work and flow your technique. Six years ago, I was 160 kilograms, a big guy. <laughs> I'm still, I'm, I still am a big guy. And I just did it to lose weight. After that, I, I really liked it. And I started to get some results, first in the white belts, then in the blue belts, then I got European gold in adult division in all the belts until brown, also world champion in uh, Abu Dhabi World Pro and in traditional Jiu Jitsu in Nawaza. So Jiu Jitsu really saved your life, you were 150 kilos. The, the things that I benefit the more from Jiu Jitsu, sure there are the physical things about losing weight and uh, feeling good with my body but the most is that uh, you have that mindset when you go on the tatami in a competition you know and you're afraid that you're gonna lose you're afraid of failure or when you are in a submission and you don't feel comfortable and you know that you don't have to tap because you won't be able to tap in the competition and I'm using that mindset in the everyday life aspects about uh, the things that I meet professionally and in my family and always trying to, to find a solution and to be better. So I think this is my greatest benefit from Jiu Jitsu, except the physical one and the healthy part. You may think that a multiple time world champion like Camille would train three times a day, six days a week, but he's way far from a full time fighter. He is working in the IT area business very successful and right now is about to release an awesome product which can change the way we all train forever. This bracelet does very good and useful math while we're training our jabs and hooks. It can tell you what you do right or wrong and improve your game. I guess the other information about it is still a company secret since the prototype is not out yet but it looks like Camille is staying at his office till late night to reach this point of business success. We have a guy here who trains, he's a full-timer and when he wants to offend you he says that uh, you're a part-timer and I don't tap to part-timers and that's funny because I usually tap him and I'm a part-timer. I don't think that it's related so much to uh, being a full-time if you don't train uh, and you don't have the discipline to, to follow the trainings and uh, the sacrifices. I have to, to do it like this to be part-time training and also do all the trainings because it's more important for me to have the financial uh, to be secure financially and have also a professional career to be able to protect my family and give them all the comfort necessary so this makes me feel more comfortable when I'm going to a competition and I know if things don't go good that's okay because I'm just a part-timer and actually I don't live from that, so there is no stress on this. I think Camille's family first attitude has a lot to do with his father's history. When he first told it to me, I remember realizing that not the Vlad Cepes era was the Dark Ages of Romania and the Balkans, but the period just 20 years ago, when the communist leaders just exterminated everyone with sense of pride and honor. In the revolution, in the Ceausescu revolution from 89, there were a lot of people that were that died and sacrificed their life for us to live a better life now. And uh, one of them is my fa father, who was um, who was a plane pilot. He was asked, his team was asked to to go to Serbia, to Belgrade, and to come back with medicine and blood and things for the, the wounded in the revolution, wounded people in the revolution. And um, he answered, he went there, but the plane crashed. And the official story is that uh, it crashed because of bad weather. But after that, the um, Russian company that produced the plane came and they had to make an investigation. They couldn't say that it was bad weather because they would have to stop producing that plane. <laughs> So they had to say something more to, to the truth. So they said that they found, I think the, the words were foreign metal objects in the plane's fuselage. I mean, I think there were bullets. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I, after that, a lot of reporters uh, put a lot of hours to work on these subjects, and uh, they found out that it was an investigator, a journalist, that filmed the, the military executing civilians. And if that guy would left the country, uh, NATO and maybe other countries could intervene in the revolution. So it wasn't possible. My father was declared an, um, an hero in the revolution and uh, I'm proud of that. It's one of the reasons that I'm, I really want to stay in Romania, <laughs> even that if the people don't understand that after Ceausescu left we didn't have immediately capitalism. <laughs> It's a process and because of that we have a lot of corruption and a lot of things that are not going very well in Romania. But I think that well, at least from a small part I, I owe it to, to stay here and to try to, to have a happy life in here, not in other country. I really think that uh, the, the things are changing. It's a problem that because we had the communism, the mentality is a little bit broken, I would say. It's not that mentality that the old capitalist countries are having. So in here, business owners are still thought a little bit like hustlers. They are not respected in the community, even if they pay a lot of taxes and even if uh, they give a lot of jobs. And this is changing also with the new generation. But you have to always to fight the, the old generation. Even my mother is concerned about me that maybe I would be better to get a job, not to have my own business. Because this is how they were raised and we have the problem with the old generation. But things are, are changing. I think the European Union needs pushing a lot this, this pace. And I'm sure that most probably in 20, 30 years, <laughs> Romania, it will be like Maybe Germany or I don't know England. Do you remember the the last time you saw your father, or you were too little? Uh, yeah, I have a memory with him. It was uh, when I sorry. You have to skip it. Not the medals, but overcoming the pain and sorrow is what makes the fighter a true champion. But what would make him really tough is overcoming the shame and embarrassment of the situation that director puts you in. This is pretty familiar to Dimitrius, and now it's time to Camille and Tudor to face it, because they're about to roll on the main stage of a theater to prove that Jiu-Jitsu is not only a great sport, but also a true art. As you already know, not a lot of jiu-jitsu guys make it to the big scene. Me and my boy Camille, we made it. We are here with the geese. There are 300,000 uh, people uh, watching us outside the theater, <laughs> waiting to enter. Plus the TV. Plus the TV, okay. So, uh, what are we going to show you? We're going to show you a technique. It's a secret technique. It's not going to be secret anymore. We're going to release it from Romania to Brazil. 1,000 years old. Yes. <laughs> And it's called a Dracula choke. If it's 1,000 years old, it has to be Macedonian one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with our history. <laughs> so, is a Dracula choke is like uh, the same thing as our uh, our king Dracula was uh, piling on uh, people, and we're gonna show you exactly how it is done. So, it's from the close guard. So you show it only once because the guy dies and yes, we get another guy. So you go for the triangle it's choke okay. here, you go for the triangle here, the guy wants to posture up, you put the hand inside and you choke him. Straight where Dracula would bite. This is how Keenan tried to choke me actually in the purple match, if you see no. <laughs> he could Keenan, Keenan knew the Romanian secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one more time. You you played with Keenan Cornelius, man? Yes, yes. Really? it's on Where? YouTube. <laughs> Where? In the Europeans, in Purple Belt. Did you destroy him? No, actually, <laughs> he tried to do this. <laughs> I knew the defense because of Tudor and our history, and he couldn't do this. But I was DQ. 
<laughs> so, so the guy was so frustrated that he was near me and I have to learn, for, have to invent some mining, maybe the, maybe worm guard or something. If you knew, if he knew the details that Tudor is showing, he could done it, but he didn't. So sorry, Keenan. I know you're still upset about that, but you shouldn't. Watch BJJ Nomad and learn 1,000 year old techniques. <laughs> Can you show us one more time? One more time, last time. And we leave and sell it. For Slow it. motion. Yeah. You go for the triangle, shoot the legs up, guy postures up. You put the hand inside, bring the legs, bring the hand, choke. Amazing. RJJ, Romanian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. BJJ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, after go. Three, One, two, go. BJJ Nomad, living, living by, by the gate. At this part of the episode, I always try to go deep and say something I think is smart and meaningful, but sometimes the simplest things are the most perfect. So here, I would love to simply thank the great guys from Grips Athletics for supporting what we do and arranging me a date with the most awesome gi ever the Blue Secret Weapon 2. Thank you Subguards for releasing our custom super quality rush guard and being on board. Thank you 5.11 Tactical for the strongest backpacks ever, which literally saved my gear from getting unusable several times. And thank you for checking out this documentary. If you like what we do, visit our web store on bjjnomad.com and buy one of our signature t-shirts, awesome rush guards, or a patch and become a part of our journey. Us. Jiu-Jitsu, it's about lifestyle, it's not about competitions. And I think it's important because it's coming from a guy who <laughs> does like 20 competitions per year. So, <laughs> But <laughs> all the time, Tudor knows it. I won't travel alone to a competition. This is one of the biggest uh, things that I can sustain this. I just was offered to go to Pan Am's, everything paid. Also, in there, the hotel, the plane ticket, everything. And I said, fuck it, no, I, I don't want to, to go there. If I'm gonna lose, it will be hard as hell. If I'm gonna win, it won't be so fun because I would be alone and I wouldn't be able to, to enjoy this feeling with anybody. So usually, even if you go to the competitions because you go with your team, with your coach, it's about lifestyle, about having fun, about cheering for them, about feeling that emotions when you step on the tatami and that fear and uh, fighting with that, winning and after that everything is nice and fine and, <laughs> and even if you lose it's much more better because you're gonna have a lot of motivation when you're gonna come back and you're gonna train harder so either way it's okay if you're with your team and bodies. Ти си жузито.